Okay, so at the end of class last time, I gave a, a little preview of this chapter. Uh, we're going to start talking about projective varieties. So we've defined a, a variety as a, a ring space that has an open cover by affine varieties. And uh, we constructed uh, some examples using a, a gluing technique. And the gluing technique is very convenient from the point of view of the definition because it sort of automatically gives you the open cover. But it's uh, not very convenient to, to use in practice. You know, we didn't even do an example of gluing more than two things together um, uh, just because there's kind of a lot of, a, a lot of pieces moving around. Um, so projective varieties are going to give us a class of examples of varieties that are not affine varieties. Uh, but they still have some kind of global description. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. Uh, and another advantage of these is that they are going to be uh, analogs of uh, compact things, um, which is uh, different than affine varieties. All right, so let's start off with the definition. So definition, uh, P, K, N, uh, we're going to call a projective space. projective space uh, over K. Remember K is our field. Um, and uh, I guess we should call it the n-dimensional. All right, and what is it? Well, uh, one way to define it is it's the, the set, as a set, it's the set of uh, one-dimensional uh, subspaces of uh, K to the n plus one. All right, so uh, notice the, the, we have an n plus 1 here uh, compared to an n here. Um, and these are subspaces in the sense of uh, vector subspaces, right? Okay. Uh, so here's, here's some important notation. Uh, a, a dimension 1 subspace uh, corresponds uh, to uh, a choice of, uh, of a non-zero point uh, in uh, k n plus 1. All right, so, so a, a pick, an example in the case of uh, uh, when n is equal 1, so you're looking at uh, k2. If you just pick uh, any point here, you just take the span of that point and uh, get a subspace there, all right? Okay. Um, so you can really think of Pn, um, oops, Pn to just be equal to uh, Kn plus 1 minus the 0 point uh, modulo some equivalence relation, uh, where, where the equivalence relation is uh, when two points determine the same subspace. So that's exactly the case of uh, like this. Uh, x uh, is x zero through x n is equivalent to y zero through y n uh, if um, x i equals uh, lambda y i uh, for all i in the same lambda each time. Okay, and uh, we'll write the equivalence class of a point like this uh, uh, using colons here instead of commas. All right, so when I write colons here, uh, I'm thinking of, an, of the equivalence class uh, under this relation, and, um, and these are called uh, homogeneous coordinates. Okay, good. We define projective space as the set of one-dimensional subspaces of, of a vector space. Uh, but there's kind of a better way to think about it from the perspective of algebraic geometry. Um, we want to think about it as, as uh, the affine space together with some extra points, sort of points at infinity. So let's define a, a map f from a n to p n. So we're going to take x1 through x n and map it to uh, the point in homogeneous coordinates with it, so 1, and then followed by x1 through xn. Now, um, it's easy to see this map is injective, right? Um, uh, the, this 1 here kind of fixes what the lambda has to be. So 
Um, all right, so, so you get that. Uh, what's the image? The image is, uh, we'll call it u0, and it's equal to uh, the set of all uh, points like this, uh, such that uh, x0 is not equal to 0. If x0 is not 0, then you can divide by x0 and, and get something of this of the form up here. So, um, okay, so let me write that down. So, so given any point here, you have where x, uh, any point of u0, you can, uh, you can write as affine coordinates like this. All right. So, so using this map, we think of an as a subset of, uh, of pn. So now let's think about what is the what is the complement. So if we take Pn and subtract out this, um, as I mentioned before, we're going to call this the the point set infinity. And uh, but what what do they look like? Well, they're the points where x zero is equal to zero. Look like this, but um, the set of points like this. If you think about it for a minute, this is exactly uh, isomorphic to uh, p n minus 1, right? You just have n, n homogeneous coordinates, coordinates, and the 0 kind of doesn't do anything. All right, so we kind of inductively think of uh, p n like this. p n is equal to uh, a n uh, union p n minus 1. Okay, and then if you want, you know, uh, p n minus 1 is equal to a n minus 1 union p n minus 2. And you can continue on that way. Um, this is compatible with, with uh, our description of, of P1 that we did before uh, with gluing. So uh, under this formula, P1 is equal to A1 union P0, or this is just a single point. Okay, uh, and uh, we called that before the, the point at infinity that we were adding in here. And uh, let me just uh, add this remark that I, I hinted at before. So uh, Pn over the complex numbers is, uh, is compact in the classical topology. All right. So that, that's a nice feature of, of projective space. OK, now we want to be able to uh, talk about polynomial functions. Uh, like we did with affine varieties in affine space. Uh, but let's make this observation first. If f is a polynomial uh, in, in these variables that are representing the homogeneous coordinates on Pn, uh, then in general, uh, v of f uh, uh, does not make sense, right? Uh, why not? Well, because um, uh, if you take f of x, it's not going to be the same as f of lambda x, even though uh, x and lambda x represent the same point in, in projective space. Okay. All right. So, but the way to fix this uh, is the following: if uh, f is well, homogeneous, okay, and what does homogeneous mean? It means that uh, all monomials have the same total degree. D. Um, okay, or another way to say that is that um, f of lambda x is equal to lambda to the d f of x. All right, so either of those things can be the definition of homogeneous. Um, then uh, V of F does make sense. Well, all right, because if, uh, if F of X is equal to zero, then uh, F of lambda X uh, will also be equal to zero and, and vice versa. So the zero set is well-defined. Uh, but, but we should also remark uh, 
if f of x uh, is not 0, then um, the value of f of x uh, is not well defined, even in the homogeneous case, right? Because uh, it's only because you can if you change the point x, uh, you multiply the value of the function by by any scalar. Right? Okay, so but but that's okay. Um, we really are only interested in in vanishing sets. Um, so if we just study homogeneous polynomials, then we'll be in good shape. All right, so let, let's make a definite definition here, and this is going to kind of generalize the idea of, of homogeneous polynomials. So a graded ring is a ring R uh, with additive subgroups. D uh, for all D uh, in uh, non-negative integers. I think in the textbook he says natural numbers, but I believe in most cases you want to allow zero. So I'm going to write as Z greater than or equal to zero. All right, and what are the conditions here? Um, such that the ring. Uh, is the direct sum of all these subgroups. So all these subgroups together kind of uh, cover the ring and they don't intersect each other. Um, okay, so another way to say this is uh, for every F in R, um, F you can kind of decompose it into uh, its graded pieces. So you have F0 plus F1 plus F2 uh, dot 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 up to Fn. Um, where fi is in ri, and, and this decomposition is unique. Okay, and, uh, and, and of course n has to be less than infinity. And uh, if, um, if fn is not equal to zero, then uh, n is the degree of f. All right, so, so this here is just sort of a restatement of what it means for R to be the direct sum of the RDs. And then we also have a definition here of the degree of an element. It's the, the largest number that you need uh, to make this decomposition. Okay. All right, uh, what's the next uh, property we need? So we need the multiplication in the ring respects the grading. Okay, so that means that if you have F in RD and G in RE, uh, then F times G would have to be in RD plus E. So the degrees add under multiplication. That's all that property is saying. Okay, and then just uh, one more piece of the definition here is uh, if uh, R is also a K-algebra, Um, it is a graded K algebra, so that's uh, an upgrade from a ring, a graded ring. Uh, if if the scalar multiplication preserves the grading, uh, so for all lambda in K and F in R D, uh, we have that uh, lambda f is still in RD. Okay. Okay, of course, the example that you want to think about, um, the main uh, graded ring we're going to use is uh, the polynomial ring. Right? Where uh, RD is equal to. Um, the space of all homogeneous uh, polynomials of degree d, total degree d, right? Okay.
So, so you can think about why uh, that satisfies all these properties, right? Every every polynomial can be broken up into parts according to its degree. If you multiply two homogeneous polynomials, you'll get a homogeneous polynomial whose degree is the product of the degrees of the factors. Okay, and, and it's also graded K-algebra. All right, uh, now we want to study ideals uh, in these graded rings, uh, and there's just a, a small subtlety in the definition. So uh, let's say an ideal uh, in a graded ring is homogeneous uh, if it can be generated by homogeneous elements now you might have guessed uh, if you're trying to guess this definition you might have said a homogeneous ideal is one uh, where every element of the ideal is homogeneous but that's not quite right you need to say that it can be generated by homogeneous elements right because an ideal has to contain uh, products of any element of the ideal with an arbitrary element of the ring so uh, so an ideal is almost never going to have uh, only homogeneous elements. So the, the right definition is, is this one. Um, so yeah, not every element of a homogeneous ideal is itself homogeneous. Okay. Uh, let's prove a lemma uh, about uh, homogeneous ideals. So um, J is homogeneous if and only if uh, for all elements in J with their uh, unique decomposition that we've talked about. So let's take this, the sum of FD. Um, we also have uh, FD is in J. All right, so um, if you take an element of the ideal and you take its decomposition into uh, the graded pieces, uh, then each piece is also in J. Um, that's equivalent to uh, the ideal being homogeneous. Uh, and then let's state part B. If uh, J1 and uh, J2 are homogeneous, uh, then so are uh, most of the constructions that you'd want to do with them. The sum, the product, uh, the intersection and uh, also the radical. All right, and then C will be the last one. Um, if J is homogeneous, then um, R mod J. Uh, with the decomposition uh, rd mod out by rd intersect j uh, is, is a graded ring. Okay, uh, so so r mod j, you know, in general it wouldn't be a graded ring, but if the ideal was homogeneous, then uh, you do get a graded ring. Um, with in its decomposition, it is exactly this. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and do the proof of the summit. Um, or at least we'll prove part A. So let's prove part A first. Uh, we'll do the forward direction first. Um, so let's uh, assume J is homogeneous. So that means J is generated by, let's say, HI uh, for I in some index set. And the HI are homogeneous. Okay, now let's take uh, any F. Uh, in J, uh, so that, uh, and then we'll write F as uh, the sum over I of GI HI. Okay, so that's just uh, uh, because uh, uh, J is generated by the HI. Now, for each GI, we can break it up into its graded pieces like this. So we'll have a sum over I and E of GI E HI where uh, G, I, E is in uh, R, E, All right? And then we can write uh, 
fd is just equal to the sum over all uh, e plus i such that the e plus degree hi is equal to g. Right, um, but that's uh, that's clearly in um, each uh, each of these is clearly in J, right? Okay. All right, sorry, that's not what I wanted to say. Let me um, erase this. What I wanted to say, what I'm trying to prove is that F D is in J, right? So, uh, but this is this is in J because it's a uh, sum of uh, g i g i e times uh, some of the generators of j okay all right let's do the other direction uh, so i claim that j can be generated by h d such that uh, h is in j and um and the uh it's like this Okay, and where so we're just going over all H and J, and then we're taking the decomposition of H into its homogeneous parts, um, and you just take all those pieces together. Uh, clearly, that will generate uh, J because it has basically has all the elements of J in there, uh, and um, and that shows that J is a homogeneous ideal because it can be generated by homogeneous polynomials H D. Okay. Um, Part B, uh, let's, let's skip the proof. I think it's uh, not hard and not too interesting, right? Uh, you can imagine how the proof would, would go here. I think it's uh, not too hard. But let, let's do part C, because I think part C is uh, maybe slightly more interesting. All right. So first we've got to show that um, The new graded pieces here uh, are subgroups here, but I think it's, e it's easy to see though that this is in fact an injective group homomorphism. Injective group homomorphism. Okay. Um, so now let's. The interesting thing to check is that each element has a unique decomposition into homogeneous parts. All right, so let's start with an F bar in R mod J. Okay, uh, F uh, that's, you know, lifted from the quotient has a unique decomposition like this. Um, that means we get a decomposition F bar uh, uh, just like this, okay? So where um, F bar is in R mod J and each one of these will be in uh, rd mod rd intersect j. Okay, uh, that's not too hard to see. Uh, but what we need to do is we need to we need to claim that this is unique. All right, so let's assume that uh, f bar has another decomposition, uh, some of g d bar. Uh, that means that the sum of FD minus GD bar like this uh, equals zero, right? Um, but that tells me that the sum of FD minus GD without any bars uh, is an element of the ideal J. Okay. Uh, but then by part A of our lemma. So let's uh, remember what part A says. It says that uh, J is homogeneous if and only if for all elements, uh, every graded piece of the element is also uh, in the ideal. Um, so that tells me that uh, FD minus GG uh, is in J. Um, okay, but that's exactly saying that FD minus GD uh, with the bars is, is zero. Okay, so we have that, in fact, this decomposition of the GDs was the same as the one we started with. Okay. Great.
But let me do a quick example just because uh, this sometimes uh, used to confuse me a little bit. So let's make sure our, we all know it's gone. Let's take let's take a look at the uh, polynomial ring R X Y and let's uh, quotient out by uh, a homogeneous ideal generated by X to the four. Okay. So let me ask you, uh, what is the degree? Of well, let's first do uh, x to the fifth, and then second, let's try uh, x cubed y plus x to the seventh. Okay, uh, so what's the degree of x to the fifth? Well, okay, x to the fifth is actually zero in this ring, so this this does not have a degree. Uh, so let me say no degree. I think maybe I didn't say that in my definition, but I probably should have. So let's uh, uh, let's go back up here. Every element has a degree. Um, so if uh, f equals zero, uh, has no degree. All right. So that so x to fifth is not degree five. It's, uh, it just doesn't have a degree. Let's look at this one. Uh, if we want to write this uh, as a direct sum of uh, graded pieces. Right? I mean, you could write it as uh, x3y bar plus x7 bar, right? But but this piece right here is zero, so that's not going to contribute to the degree. Uh, it is in the, you know, that is technically in, you know, in the degree um, seven piece, but it's zero, so that doesn't count. This one is not zero, um, so so the degree here is is four correspond to this degree. Okay, so I, I hope that's clear. All right, we're going to do our definitions of zero sets. So let's let uh, S uh, be a subset of homogeneous polynomials. Homogeneous polynomials. And then we'll define uh, the vanishing set of S to be the set of all uh, X in the projective space so that uh, F of X equals zero for all F and S. Okay, and that's the subset of PN. Okay, and uh, we made a remark earlier that it makes sense to ask uh, whether or not a homogeneous polynomial vanishes on a point of projective space. Okay. So we'll call this the, the zero locus. Okay, and uh, subsets like this subsets like this are called projective varieties. All right, and I, I'll make a comment here. Uh, of course, later on, we're going to extend the definition of projective variety to include a structure sheaf and a topology. And, and also, we'll say something like anything that's isomorphic to one of these things is a projective variety, just like we did with affine varieties. All right, that's part A of the definition. Of, part B of the definition is, uh, let's take a J to be a, a homogeneous ideal. Then um, the vanishing set of J is the set of all X in projective space. Such that uh, F of X equals zero for, now we have to be just a little bit careful here. Uh, this is for all uh, homogeneous elements in J. Right, you, you can't ask for all, all elements in J because not every element of J is homogeneous. But this turns out to be, um, uh, be good enough. And of course, if, if S is a set of elements, homogeneous elements that generate J, then V of S and V of J will be the same, right? Okay, and then our, our next or part C of the definition, we'll take any subset 
uh, then we're going to define the ideal of x and it will be a set of all uh, homogeneous polynomials Uh, such that uh, f of x uh, equals 0 for all x and x. Okay, and I guess I, I said set, but I, what I really mean is the ideal generated by that set. So these parentheses are the ideal generated by. So this is going to be uh, an ideal in the polynomial ring. Okay, uh, if we need to in the future di uh, differentiate these uh, constructions from the affine ones, uh, you know, we'll write a VP for vanishing set projective or IP for ideal projective uh, versus um, VA and uh, IA for the affine cases. All right, so the projective ones are the ones I just barely defined. The affine ones are the ones we've talked about uh, previously uh, for affine space. Uh, let me do uh, one, one quick example. So uh, let's look at a point at A with homogeneous coordinates at A0 up through uh, AN in projective space. And uh, let's assume for convenience that A0 is not 0. And let's try and find uh, what, is the, what is the ideal of A, or what, how can we write that A as projective variety? Uh, so the set containing this point you can write as the vanishing locus uh, the following. Let me write, just write it down. Then we'll talk about why it's right. Uh, a zero x one minus a one x zero. A zero x two minus a two x zero, and uh, continuing on until we get to a zero x n minus a n x zero. Okay. Uh, first thing uh, we want to check is if we'll go, go first. First of all, these are homogeneous polynomials, so that's good. Second thing, uh, do they all vanish on A? Uh, well, that's easy to check because you're just replacing the X's with A's in the same subscript, so these all just become become zero. Okay, and the last thing to check is that there's not other points going on here. How can we check that? Okay, well, um, what we're going to do is we can, we can just kind of solve this coordinate. So, so any, any uh, point uh, X0 through X1, homogeneous coordinates X0 through X1 that satisfy this, satisfies this equation, uh, must all satisfy that uh, x1 is equal to a1 over a0 times x0. Right, that's just by solving this. Remember, we're assuming a0 is not 0. And similarly, uh, x2 will be uh, a2 over a0 times x0. Okay, so, uh, so our point will have to be this form. x0 will be basically anything. Um, and then x1 has to be this and x2 has to be this. Um, and let me put colons here and then, and then continue on like that. Okay, um, but uh, what can you do here? Well, notice there, there's an x0. Okay, first of all, if x0 is 0, then this point is just the point with all zeros, which is not allowed in projective space. So we can, we can assume that x0 is not 0. And uh, then we kind of cancel it out, and then we multiply everything also by a zero. So in the end, you get you get exactly what you wanted, right? Uh, this is just equal to this times you know uh, a zero divided by x zero or something like that. Okay, good. All right, so here's our next example. Let me see if I can explain these pictures to you. So we're starting out with uh, f, a homogeneous polynomial of degree two in three variables. We can think of uh, the affine vanishing locus in A3 or the projective vanishing locus in P2. Uh, the philosophy is, is sort of that lines in the affine vanishing locus correspond to points in the projective vanishing locus. So uh, let's try and see if we can see uh, what are the lines in this affine cone here. Um, well, I've drawn the cross section x0 equals 1 in orange here. And for every point 
in this cross section. So the cross section is kind of this little hyperbola here. For every point here, you can draw a line through that point that also goes to the origin. It's at the, the center of the cone here. And so if you pick a point over here, you'll get a line that goes like this, goes to the origin, and then comes out down the bottom here. Or if you pick a point on this side of the hyperbola, you'll get a line that goes through the origin and then down to the bottom part of the cone over here. Okay, so you can see every line in the cone corresponds to one of the points on that orange hyperbola. Except for two lines, there's two lines that don't do that. Uh, those are the lines uh, that are contained in this cross section that's in blue, x0 equals 0. Uh, you have these two blue lines that are, are drawn here, and uh, those don't correspond to a point on the orange hyperbola. So uh, now let's go look at uh, VPF and P2. So I want to think of this uh, as we talked about before as just being the affine, two dimensional affine space plus some points at infinity. So I've drawn it as a picture like A2. And, uh, and what is the correspondence? How does the correspondence like work? Well, it's, it's exactly what, uh, what we said it's, it's just the cross section x0 equals 1. So um, what you have here is a hyperbola. In orange that's supposed to correspond exactly to this hyperbola in the cross section over on this side okay and then how do we account for the extra points here we have points at a and b corresponding to two different lines and I, i've kind of uh, written them out here here's b and b and a and a um, those are kind of the, the points at infinity okay and um they sort of uh they sort of correspond to um the, the tangent direction uh, that the, that's of this hyperbola. So as, as you approach, uh, as you go along this hyperbola off to infinity, the limit of it will, will be equal to sort of the, the line through the origin that is tangent to. Um, so that's why this point at infinity here, the limit as, as you go along this curve is the same as the limit as you go along here because the, um, the line that they're through the origin that they're tangent to at infinity is the same. So those are both approach the same point. And similarly, uh, this b and this b, these points at infinity are the same point. And you can kind of uh, see how this that is over here, right? As you go off along this orange curve and you go off farther and farther and farther, you get closer and closer to this point. Uh, to, you're taking a line through the origin and a point here, and that gets closer and closer to this line that's labeled A. Okay, so hopefully that makes uh, some sense and uh, gives you some idea of why we were calling these things points at infinity. Okay, let's now be a little bit more precise and, and make some uh, general definitions about uh, these cones. So uh, here's a definition. Uh, let's let uh, pi from uh, a n plus 1 minus 0 uh, mapping to p n. And this is just the map that takes x0 through xn and maps it to uh, the point with the homogeneous coordinates x0 through xn. Now, this is different than the map that we were talking about before where a1, an is included, included to pn. This is the this is the map that takes the uh, the vector space and um, and sort of mods out by the scalar multiplication. Okay, so the fiber of a point over this map is exactly the line that corresponds to the, the point in pn. All right, um, so a subset of AN plus 1 is called a cone if uh, 0 is in X and uh, for all X in X, uh, we have lambda X in X uh, for all and the in k. Okay, here, here is the we're using just the scalar vector space uh, multiplication. Okay, and so you should kind of think of this as, as x being a, a union of lines to the origin. Right. Uh, so the, the sort of picture you should have in mind is this this thing we were looking about looking at in the previous example. So that's an example of a cone. All right, part B of the definition. Um, if x is a cone, then we can take its projectivization. So I'm going to write uh, p of x, and that's defined to be just uh, 
uh, the image of x uh, minus 0 under this map pi that we defined uh, at the beginning of the definition. Okay, and we'll call that the projectivization of x. Projectivization. Very good. All right, and then part C is um, for projective variety. Uh, x in Pn, uh, we can take uh, the cone over x, which we'll write as C of x, and it's just uh, um, you put in the zero and then you take the, the pi inverse of x. All right, so we'll call this the cone over x. Okay, let's talk about how these uh, these cones correspond to algebra. So that will be in, in this remark here. Uh, let's let S be a subset of, of homogeneous polynomials. Homogeneous, uh, I guess they should be non-constant as well. Uh, then the vanishing set of S uh, is a cone. Okay. Of course, uh, so why is that? Well, because if you have a x in, in the vanishing set of a and a f, of s, and a f is in s, then um, f of uh, lam lambda x is just uh, lambda to the d, f of x, where d is the degree of f, and um, but, f, but f of x is equal to zero. So uh, because it's in the vanish, because uh, x is in the vanishing set. All right. So this this shows that. Um, so uh, lambda x is also in the vanishing set. Okay, so that's easy. Uh, let's look at uh, part b. Um, if x is a cone, then uh, then its ideal is a homo homogeneous ideal. So kind of the converse of a. Uh, how can we do that? How can we prove that? Uh, so let's let f be in the ideal of x and uh, write f, uh, decompose it into its homogeneous parts. And then let's take uh, x to be a uh, new point of x. So uh, so you know that uh, 0 equals f of x, uh, which is uh, equal to f of uh, lambda x. Because uh, you... Um, because you know the lambda x is also uh, in the vanishing set of x because x is a cone. Um, but this is equal to uh, lambda to the d f d of x, the sum over all those. All right, um, just write f as its homogeneous parts and then you can pull the lambdas out. Okay, But this is true uh, for all lambda. Um, so hence we see that the um, Hence, we see that the, this right-hand side here um, is, is a zero polynomial in lambda, All right? So if you have a polynomial uh, that's zero at infinitely many uh, values, and it must be the zero polynomial, um, so that tells me that fd of x is actually zero, okay? And And that exactly will tell me that uh, fd is in the ideal of x uh, for all d. And uh, remember that that was one of our characterizations of homogeneous ideals, was that if you had any f, and f of d was in um, i of x for all d, um, then that means that the ideal was homogeneous, right? Okay, good. So that's proof of, uh, of this part b. All right, so... Uh, Here's the lemma that kind of summarizes the relationship between uh, cones and, and projective varieties. All right, and it says uh, there is a bijection uh, between uh, cones in uh, an plus one.
and projective varieties. Uh, MPN. Okay, and it's given exactly by the operations that we just uh, we just looked at. So you take x to uh, p of x, and uh, and it, it would be, if you start with the projective variety, then you can go take the cone over that projective variety. Okay, and you, you're using exactly the sort of the same ideal, right? You, you have an ideal defining defining uh, uh, a cone in here. Then you can use that. And then it will be a homogeneous ideal, and you can use it to define a projective variety. If you had a projective variety here, it's defined by some ideal of uh, a homogeneous ideal, and I will define a cone over here. Okay, so um, so that kind of formalizes uh, what we saw in our example um, back up here. So that that works in general.